Yeah, hello, I'm Svenja Tido, and I'm from Benga University and a lecturer in wildlife ecology. Hi, I'm Linda Rodwell. I'm at the University of Plymouth, and I'm an Associate Professor of Ecological Economics. Hi, I'm Ben Ray. I'm a Specialist Advisor in Marine Ecology at Natural Resources Wales. Hi, I'm Karen Robinson. I'm a Lead Specialist Advisor for Marine Habitats in Natural Resources Wales, and I mostly cover um, advice and evidence on benthic habitats and species. Could you tell me a little bit more about where the idea for this project came from? I've been working on the effects of artificial light at night over the past years, together with um, one of the other collaborators here, um, Stuart Jenkins. And what we found recently is that um, artificial light at night is actually um, reducing the survival of, of larvae. We can't really manage climate change locally, but we can manage um, artificial light at night. And we do know how it's affecting an organism's um, health. So um, we are uh, an advisor to Welsh Government on nature conservation issues. Um, and we also have responsibility for managing habitats and species of conservation importance in Wales. And oysters is one of the species which we help to um, advise on in terms of future management. So this project ties in quite nicely with some of our evidence priorities around climate change pressures and looking at what might be important in terms of um, survival and resilience and vulnerability of different habitats and species. Um, and also bringing in pressures like light, which may also have um, implications for where we choose um, to advise on different aspects of human pressures and also some of our activities to do with things like restoration. What we've seen over the last uh, several hundred years in, in Wales is a decline, well, not just Wales, but in, across the UK, decline in native oyster population. So we need as much evidence as possible to, to best inform the placement of any future restoration or initiatives to, to increase this habitat and populations uh, in the future. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very much more focused on the kind of benthic, um, um, benthic ecosystem services side of things and human pressures and management. So my, my field is ecological economics, so um, I'm interdisciplinary as, as an individual as well. So I, I am interested in how humans interact with the environment through the economy but also how the environment is, is providing us with these ecosystem services that Karen just mentioned. So I'll, I'll be looking at the, the social and economic aspects of, of this PhD. What we know is that oysters and um, oyster habitat um, offers a range of ecosystem services from uh, the physical providing fish habitats, they filter water, um, they can provide, if sited in the right place, they can provide uh, coastal defenses, and they also sequester carbon through um, the sort of um, the system that they they filter um, through um, their biology. Um, but oysters also provide a huge cultural value as well in terms of what they mean to people in terms of their cultural heritage. And what kinds of skill sets would this PhD require? This is a really um, interdisciplinary project because we not only have um, the biology and the ecology, where students will um, learn to conduct experiments um, with adult oysters, but also you know very technical expertise when it comes to um, wearing larvae, for instance. But we also have the um, social science component that Linda will be leading, and obviously the very applied um, perspective that Ben and Karen are bringing in. So I think this is a, um, a great opportunity to get a really interesting skill set. Um, and I think it's also really suitable for someone who either has a biology background or a social science background. And I think uh, it's also really important to note that in the beginning of the PhD, uh, we will um, have the opportunity for the student to be um, in Bangor, but also have the um, placement at NRW, so that um, in the beginning it can really be a phase of getting to the different components. I agree entirely with what, what Sanjay just said. Um, um, the, the, the main thing is really to be open minded. I think coming from either discipline, any either background or any any background really would be appropriate for, for this. And, and just being able to embrace uh, the other discipline that maybe you have, have less background in and being open to training in that um, that will be provided. The student will be based um, in Bangor, but also um, have a placement uh, at uh, NRW. So to be really able to understand uh, whereas um, the resource management component coming into what skills are needed. So I think it's also a great opportunity to already link into potential future employment and see where these projects are going. 
Um, and the student will also really learn these technical skills in the laboratory. So I think it will be a really colorful mix of experiences. Just to add to that, I think it's important in the first year for, for the student to meet stakeholders um, further beyond uh, beyond the ones that already have been mentioned. Um, uh, and, and also maybe a, a trip down to, to Plymouth to, to discuss um, the socioeconomic aspects of the PhD. So I think by the end of the first year, the student will have a very good plan of, of the PhD moving forward in terms of the different methodologies that would be used and a clear focus then on where the training aspects are so planned. What kinds of careers do you think this PhD could lead to? Because it's interdisciplinary, it, it opens so many doors and it's that's really what's so exciting about, about this um, PhD. And the careers could be academic, they could be research, but they could also be about environmental management. Um, and, and those are very exciting opportunities. They're welcome to, to get in touch with me via email and if they've got specific questions to, um, you know, either um, Ben or Karen from NRW or Linda, um, then I'm happy to put them in touch.